Hello mortals, I am the booktube goddess, the number one drag queen booktuber on YouTube. And it is time for another game of Shelve It or Shove It, the completely superficial way to pick books based solely on their cover. Now I've decided for Shelve It or Shove It that I'm just going to be picking one book to add to my TBR. So let's take a look at books released in February for the March TBR. So we're just going to be looking at young adult science fiction and fantasy. In young adult, the first book is The Gilded Ones by Namini Forna. And it has a almost photorealistic picture of a young black woman, young black girl. She has it looks like some type of tribal makeup and an outfit in gold. It's a pretty cover. There's a little byline, Outcast by Blood Warriors by Choice. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's a fantasy. Um, hmm. 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 I kind of like it. I'm going to shelve it. Next up is a book in a series that I am familiar with, Ransom Riggs, uh, Mrs. Peregrine's Peculiar Children series, and this book is called The Desolations of Devil's Acre. And I always love these covers with the old-fashioned photographs, and it, it looks spooky and quirky, but I think I've only read three books. I think I read the first three Peregrine books, so I'm not going to jump into the sixth Peregrine book, so I am going to have to shove it. Okay, next up, everyone is talking about A Court of Silver Flames, the new Sarah J. Mass novel. I have to say, this is one of the uglier covers in this series. Um, I believe I have read the first three books, so I think this one's the fourth book. Anyway, there is, if you don't know, it's a series about a human girl that goes into the fey political intrigue court. And there is a mask on the cover with a sun, which I believe is one of the characters. I kind of feel like I have to read this because every other booktuber in the universe is reading it, but I'm not fond of this cover, and I think I just may, if I do read it, I just may wait uh, a little bit before I pick it up. So I'm not going to ride the hype train on this one. I'm going to shove it. Next up is The Project by Courtney Summers, New York Times bestselling author of Sadie. And I haven't read Sadie, don't know this author. But the cover is kind of cool. It looks very much like a horror book. There is a profile of a woman drawn in red with her hair sort of streaming down, kind of looks like blood. And then cut into her is a cabin in the woods. If that doesn't scream horror, I don't know what else does. I am interested in this one, surprisingly. I am going to shelf it. Now, I have to be honest with you, I don't know if I'm going to pick this one because I haven't had the greatest of luck with young adult horror. I like my horrors to be pretty intense, and young adult seems to be a little bit muted. Uh, I think the last one that I liked was The Devouring Grey, but even that one I didn't feel was a great horror novel. Anyway, uh, I am shelving this. <laughs> Next up is The Iron Raven by Julie Kagawa, a New York Times bestselling author. The Iron Fae even fall. There is a picture of a crow against a gold background. Um, not crazy about this cover. It's pretty generic, I think, as fantasy covers go nowadays. And I have a feeling this is since it says the Iron Fae colon even fall, I have a feeling this is part of the series. So for those reasons, I am going to shove it. 
Now we move on to science fiction. <laughs> First up is The Echo Wife by Sarah Gailey. And it's kind of a cool cover. There's these two wedding rings reflected off each other. Um, the echo and then wife is inverted. Or mirror, not a mirror image. Or is it a mirror image? Anyway, it's, it's like a reflection. So, um, a life is a dangerous thing to share. That's kind of interesting. I guess it's a science fiction romance. And although I think the cover is kind of intriguing, I'm not a great romance fan. So just on that supposition, I am going to shove it. Next up is the history of what comes next, a Take Them to the Stars novel by Sylvan Neuville. And it's kind of an interesting cover because it has this old fashioned aged paper and it looks like in orange there is a blueprint of a rocket ship. Um, hmm. I'm wondering if this is a sequel. Sounds like it. Hmm. I'm going to have to shove it. Next up is Winter's Orbit by Everina Maxwell. One match can light up an empire. So it kind of has this young adult feel, but it's in the science fiction section. Um, it looks like there are silhouettes of two boys, maybe, or two men with a starscape and they each have a looks like a different world within their silhouette one has floating stones and the other is in a sunset so i'm going to guess that these are two people on two different worlds and i don't know how they interact i kind of like the cover never heard of the author but, you know, just based on the cover, I'm going to shelve it. Next up is a Star Wars novel, Into the Dark by Claudia Gray, a Star Wars The High Republic novel. A uh, perfectly fine cover. Uh, almost looks like a graphic novel. I wonder if it is a graphic novel. No, because they have a different section for that. Anyway, I'm not interested in a Star Wars novel at this time, so I am going to shove it. Finally, in science fiction, The Future is Yours, a novel by Dan Frey. And I am getting nothing from this cover. There is a watch or a clock in the background, and the word yours is a little fuzzy. I have no idea what this is about. Uh, I don't know what subgenre of science fiction this is, I'm going to shove it. Now we move on to fantasy. And first up is The Witch's Heart by Genevieve Gornishek. And there's a little byline or tagline, men die, gods die, she lives on. I'm getting a Greek feel to this. She's a silhouette of a woman in her hair. There's a snake and a wolf and another woman. You know, I just read Lore last month, which, by the way, wasn't a bad novel. Um, this one, I'm just not feeling in a Greek mood. I mean, the cover's fine, but, but I'm just not in the mood for a Greek fantasy right now. Since I just read one. So I am going to shove it. Next up is New York Times bestselling author Karen Marie Moaning, Kingdom of Shadow and Light. And there is a very attractive person on the cover. I'm not sure of the gender, doesn't matter. Uh, but it looks like she's or he's surrounded by shattered something. Shattered, or is that a space battle? Hmm. It's a pretty cover, but it's not calling to me. So I'm going to have to shut it. Next up, Elliot de Boudard's Fireheart Tiger. 
I like this cover. It has a Art Nouveau feel to it. A woman holding a cup of fire. Fire is like going everywhere. Is she wearing a kimono? I am getting sort of an Asian feeling to this. But honestly, it's really not drawing me in. It's not, if I saw this on a bookstore, this would be the first book I would go to. So I am going to shut it. Next up is The Absolute Book by Elizabeth Knox. Um, there is a tree on the cover. There is a star background. Getting nothing from this. Slate calls it magnetic and brain bending. That's the only thing I like about this cover is the little quote from Slate. Uh, I, I can't, I can't with this one. I'm going to have to shove it. And finally, in Fantasy the Memory Theater by Karen Tidbeck, it looks like an hourglass with blood running through it, with a red sand running through it, and there is a forest or some trees in front of the hourglass. I do like the illustrative quality to this. I don't know this author. I'm kind of... I'm kind of intrigued. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and shell the memory creator. Okay, I only have three books to choose from. I have The Gilded Ones and The Project, which are both young adult, and I have The Memory Theater that is fantasy. I'm really surprised I didn't pick any science fiction or more fantasy. Uh, I kind of want to just do the fantasy because I've been doing young adults so much, but the memory theater, I just, I wish I knew more about it. I'm not getting much from the cover. And honestly, the two young adults, I think I'm more drawn to the horror novel because I just haven't read a good horror in a while. Not so sure how I feel about it being a young adult horror, but you know what? Let's throw caution to the wind and pick The Project by Courtney Summers. I'm hoping it will surprise me, but first let's read the blurb to see exactly what I am getting myself into. Okay, it says Lo Denham is used to being on her own. After her parents died, Lo's sister B joined the Unity Project, leaving Lo in the care of their great aunt. Thanks to its extensive charitable work and community outreach, the Unity Project has won the hearts and minds of most in the upstate New York region, but Lowe knows there's more to the group than meets the eye. She spent the last six years of her life trying and failing to prove it. When a man shows up at the magazine Lowe works at claiming the Unity Project killed his son, Lowe sees the perfect opportunity to expose the group and reunite with B once and for all. When her investigation puts her in the direct path of its leader, Lev Warren, and as Lowe delves deeper into the project, the lives of its members upend everything she thought she knew about her sister, herself, cults, and the world around her, to the point she can no longer tell what's real or true. Lowe never thought she could afford to believe in Lev Warren, but now she doesn't know she can afford not to. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to be reading. Is it a supernatural thriller or horror? Is it a book about a cult? Is it a psychological thriller? Is it a mystery? I have a lot of questions even after reading this blurb. So who knows? Who knows if I'm going to like it or not? Anyway, I'll have affiliate links below to some of the books mentioned. And please subscribe to me if you're not subscribed. What are you waiting for? And hit that notification bell and give this video a thumbs up. Until we meet again, may all the books you read be blessed. <laughs>